started rhyming just to be somebody. I found out that I already was. Let me talk to you guys about today is the ASP. Does anyone know what the ASP is? Anyone at all? Let me take it. Where is ASP? Think about that. Is it about how to approach, like, um,
you get everything based on having strong relationships. You can't do any of this organizing work without strong relationships. And a part of building that is making sure you know who you are and your audience is, and knowing everything about them and making sure that they get that connection with you. And the more relatable they are, the more the problem is there as well. So the more you point out things about them that's just like you, it kind of becomes their problem as well. Any questions at this point? All right, so step two, knowing your goal. Going in with the end in mind. What am I trying to accomplish? Not, hey, this guy sounds cool. Let me go have lunch with him. But because of that, right? So knowing your goal, what are you going to this meeting to ask for? Also, building urgency around that issue. Explain why the work is important, why it has to be done now, and why it's important for that person to be involved. Once again, we're seeing your research and knowing your audience coming into play. So one example I gave um, to the last group was, I think I read it in a academia of against New York City. You guys know that this week was week of action for solutions, not suspensions. Anybody know what's going on nationwide? So um, one thing I saw this week with everyone putting out you know, articles and tweets on that is that in New York City schools, there are 260 students suspended every day. So that's a small fact, a quick tidbit that builds urgency, tells them why something has happened now, and you have to connect it to that person, and why it should matter to them. So I want to hear from a couple of you guys here, what are some of the things you say when you're meeting with people or when you're recruiting students to build urgency around the education crisis in your city or in your state? Uh, I take my story itself, and I ask them questions related to their story, and then if they have positive experiences, work on this today or tomorrow as opposed to next year. What about job operations? <laughs> Usually, that's one of the most powerful, some of the most powerful things that I've seen. I've seen when it comes to like, um, in the classroom, kind of like participating in the and the teachers and the colleagues. I, I, I always uh, talk to students that, you know, we have so many of you in the students and participate, but I also kind of have like questions that they're going to and those individuals were there when I was going to school and like, I was going to school. And now that I was there and, and I kind of like talked to students and saw what kind of environment the school is, it has a change since I left. And I, and I tell them, you know, I went to the school, I can relate to the school, I can relate to the parents, because my parents were like very involved in school. And there's, it's still the same as it was like about like seven or six years ago. It hasn't changed at all. So in the are supposed to like change it every year and nothing has happened yet. So, well, parents to get more involved, so then that's how I told their opinion and pretty much get a little bit more involved as much as I can, so it works out a lot. So you use your story and how the problem is perpetuated for so many years to try to call these people to action. Yeah. Any other examples? We'll take one more. Um, this side of the room is yeah. all the way live. <laughs> <laughs> I think that we did have our school with the uh, environmental um, thing, so we thought that if we not just tell people in organizations that, oh, that environment is in bad condition and we need to fix it, so we just show them or told them the ways that they can help. So we started by talking to the students in our um, school, and then we ended up talking to the mayor about it and his council, so they they did bring it to the doctor. And environmental justice is an issue that's difficult to people to want to work around, right? A lot of people don't understand things that are going on. Environment kind of relates to their everyday life. How are you able to build urgency around that work with people who normally maybe don't know much about how the environment actually impacts? So our just main goal was just making them aware because we felt like the reason why we were having like a negative impact was that they weren't aware about like how serious the conditions were. So we thought instead of just trying to demand people to do something or demand people to recycle, we let them know that this is that community, this is your environment, this is what's wrong with it, and hopefully it will help and we got a lot one um, startling thing that I found to be very resonating in the community when I go and speak to community members is I use the third grade reading score statistic. 
many, like, when you tell someone that they're basing the prison bed needs off of third grade reading scores, it immediately makes it their problem. Third graders is everybody's problem. How do you condemn a third grader in jail? So trying to think about statistics like that that just make your gut feel icky are going to make other people want to act. And it's going to make that problem a now problem, not a tomorrow problem, because tomorrow there's another third grader taking tests. So it's a now problem. So, so, so yeah, for example, structuring that mobilizing message that she's talking about, these are the things that you should be thinking of. That each of you have identified in the examples you just gave. What is the problem? What is it that is wrong with the education system or another social justice area that is making you angry, that makes other people angry, that angers your community? What is that problem? What is the solution that you can offer? How do you build hope in these people? And make them believe that there's an action that they can take that brings opportunity to solve this. So we have the anger of the problem, the solution which provides hope, and then what action are you asking of them to provide opportunity to fix the problem? And that's where you make your ask. And then one important thing to note about anger. Anger is healthy, but it needs to be channeled. You can't go in there just yelling and have an attitude. But when you have anger and fire, people will act off of it as long as it's channeled. So make sure you channel your anger and respect anger. Step three. Whenever you're going to make an ask in groups, now this only works if you're doing an ask in groups, which is very effective, especially when you're going to like representatives or to maybe another community organization. Bring some people that are affected by the problem with you. Identify your role. You need a meeting leader. The person that's gonna set up that meeting, the person that's gonna bring you all in and say thank you for allowing us to come in and talk to you. Um, thank you for giving us this opportunity. Um, you're going to need a storyteller, the person that's giving the story itself, that's setting, the, you know, telling the problem according to their own. Then you need the pitcher, the person that's telling them, like, hey, this is what we can do. So you pitch your solution. And then you have someone that's, that's there. So if the representative or whoever you're trying to ask of has questions, there's people on standby most affected by your problem that can tell, the, tell that person why this ask is so important. Are a few best practices. Use strong language. Ask either or questions rather than yes or no questions. So for example, if we're talking about electoral campaign. Can you come out this Saturday, either this Saturday or Sunday to volunteer with us to campus? I come to the people to vote. As opposed to will you join us? Sorry. <laughs> As opposed to yes or no, can you come out and volunteer with us? So can you either come out Saturday or Sunday as opposed to will you volunteer with this? Do you understand what that's doing? The two options you're providing them, you're still getting the volunteer. You're still getting what you want out of it. And you're not, you're not, you're not making it seem like they only have one way to get involved. You're giving them multiple ways. But at the same time, you're not giving them so much wiggle room that they don't get involved. When you try the opportunities. Exactly. So when you're really trying to especially work with like representatives and legislators and get them involved. You can't just like leave it open to them to tell you when it's going to work for them. You need to provide them with examples of what days you want and then let them choose. Be specific, going back to the structure of the hard ass that she spoke about. Um, so yeah, sometimes you'll get, you know, no's, but you don't want to leave open that opportunity. So you want to try to get as many opportunities out there for them to tell you yes and kind of work with their schedule um, so you can get your volunteer or someone to show up to your rally or whatever action that you decide to take. Um, so using either or questions. Also using inclusive language. Will you join us next Saturday when we're going to meet with legislators to talk about restorative justice? Make it personal. Versus As will you go It's not just their thing, it's our thing. Together. Ask for something specific, so that's going back to the soft versus hard ask. Give the date, the time, and the task. Establish the exact expectation for the activity. And then ask and shut up. But this is like the best part. Silence is building, right? Where were we taught that? A lot of them were running out of silence is building. And this is so when you get your story out and you go back to the roles, 
and you have the person who says a plea, and you get in there and you're giving your story itself. The person is talking to this person about why this issue is connected to their life and why that person should care about it, and then you make your ask, stop. Give them time to think. Let it resonate. You don't always have to keep talking and talking to people. So sometimes being silent and allowing them to take in everything you just gave them, give them the opportunity to say yes. You also need to be consistent. If they come back and you with no, be prepared to follow up with ask based on what you, why you think this came up. You need to read their body language, you need to read their tone, and then read exactly what they tell you, right? But be persistent and be ready to follow up. So can you come to Canvas Saturday at 9, 30, 8 a.m. or Sunday? Uh, I don't know, I usually like to get sleep. Well, you know we'll be done at four o'clock. You can sleep after. So be persistent and be prepared to come up with problem questions. Of these four questions, I want to read them all and I want you to identify if they are soft or hard acts. Can you come Canvas Saturday at 9.30 or Sunday at 1 p.m.? Is that a soft or hard act? Who said soft? It's a soft ass. Why is it a soft ass? Look. Can. Exactly. And it's also giving them wiggle room. Right? They have two options. So it's a little wiggle room. When this weekend would you be able to canvas? Hard or soft? Soft. Could you canvas on election day? What time? We had, a, we had a good time with this one in the last session, though, because canvassing on election day is a particular day, so like that's specific. But leaving it open for a time, please. So that one, you know. Okay. Could you canvass the weekend or one day before election day? So, right. Do you have a question? Uh, yeah. I'm so confused about part of the Was 
still frame it like a nice man? Are you just going to use words like me and So I, have, I do a lot of political organizing also, and I think one thing you have to understand, and just, just from my perspective, if you have members of Esper and they're proud to be there, you have to hold them accountable. I know we don't want to be rude, we don't want to say, you know, demand as you're saying, but these are your members. If they're proud to be a part of your organization, for you to make a hard ask and say, I need you there, bring five people, don't be embarrassed to ask. They are going to hold you accountable as a leader to be there. You need to hold your members accountable. It's not always about saying please and thank you. You should do that. But if they're supposed to feel invested in your organization, then you need to make those hard asks because it's important. If you're always saying, could you, would you, maybe, you don't sound like a leader. You sound like you're floundering. Hold them accountable. Do not be afraid to hold your members accountable. See if you screwed <laughs> So making multiply. So in the last one, she talked about some of the steps you can take if when you make your ask, someone says no. This one is if they say yes, how you get more out of it. So making multiple asks. If someone agrees to come, this is in the context of an election, so we can apply this to issue campaign as well. But if someone agrees to come to a campus this weekend, also ask them to commit to a shift during GOT. So, or is GOT, does everyone know what that is? Get off the boat. That's basically the three days leading up to election day. It's like three weeks. It's like a week. Is it like time frame leading up to election day? <laughs> it's, usually <laughs> seven, it's, it's, usually it's usually just seven days leading up to the election. Whatever. Time leading up to an election. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> I think it varies by campaigns and time. <laughs> um, so basically, like if you were talking to someone and it's like two months out, and actually let's do a month because that's closer. So this person is agreeing to volunteer, but you know that you need like a lot of people to volunteer during this short, shorter amount of time before the election day. So each person that you're getting to commit to volunteer ahead of time, you're also trying to convince them to come back during this time where you know you're going to need a lot of boots on the ground. So that's making them multiple ads. They say yes once, and they say, oh, you know, I'm busy at this meeting, but I can come in and give you an hour of my time. You follow up with those people, and you basically roll them in until they become your team leaders. So they go from being like a one-time, one-hour volunteer to being one of your all-stars. That's how you do it. You make multiple ads. But also test it. I know what the feeling from the star. I'm blind in the eye, so I see you with my heart. To me, all of y'all look exactly the same. Fear, faith, compassion, and pain. Uh, I started rhyming just to be somebody. I found out that I already was. Cause can't nobody be free unless we're all free. It's no me and no you, it's just us. Street preacher, what a fan once called me. I've been called worse and tried to live up. Hope you don't mind a few more.